Hello, I'm Dennis Danzik, and welcome to episode five in our series. This one named Betty 3, which is a laboratory device of a photon engine, which is behind me. And I'm going to explain all of the engine's attributes and what it was built to, uh, to demonstrate. Um, as always, we are shooting these videos without editing, so if there's a little tick or a little stumble or whatever on my part, we're just going to keep going and moving through um, the teaching so that uh, you can understand what you uh, uh, would like to understand in it and see that we're not editing uh, in any way the video. We have our clock here with the second hand uh, rotating around so you can see that there are no edits. And we have a reciprocal camera in the back there, you can see me, uh, that also is uh, facing a clock that uh, is set at approximately the same time as, uh, as this one. Make sure we don't have anybody in the background doing something um, to get this uh, engine to operate. Um, the Betty 3 is laboratory model we built about four years ago. And it was to show two things, that the engine initiates um, the flywheel, in other words, it begins the spinning the flywheel, but more importantly, that it accelerates the flywheel through the paired permanent magnetic field. Um, what develops that paired permanent magnetic field? And again, this is a force, it's not energy, okay? Um, the parts of the engine are similar to every other photon engine. Uh, we have uh, in this case, two flywheels, each weigh 100 pounds apiece. Uh, this was done as a uh, uh, repeatable science platform so that we could do some testing. So this one's got an adjustable, uh, we can change the moment of inertia by adding lead shot to these cylinders. And of course, that's not necessary today. So we're going to put that back on. Um, the device rotates in both directions freely. You can see the attenuator here um, acting at random. I'll spin it, spin it the other way, uh, which is counterclockwise, it's proper rotation. You can see the attenuator and the power ring. The power ring is hot, in other words, it has a permanent magnetic field. And of course, we guard that pattern, that's called our geography, okay? And then, of course, the attenuator itself is also magnetically hot. And I'll get that on there so you can see that in all directions. Hopefully you can see that light going. And of course that is also a permanent magnet. The paired permanent magnetic field takes place between the attenuator, uh, which weakens the field, and of course the, uh, the power ring there. Um, the timing marks on this, um, you see this long white mark here in the video, that's our point of entropy. If you do not understand point of entropy, um, and that's our nomenclature, um, you can go back to a previous episode uh, entitled Marie 4, and it will go through that and give you that uh, information so you understand a little bit more about uh, the technology. Um, on the attenuator itself, we have a timing mark here, uh, which coincides, I'll rotate that around. It's gonna coincide with a timing mark here on the bottom of the base, which you cannot see, um, but every time that uh, goes around, you'll see the timing mark um, come back around and then uh, follow the power ring. Um, the Timing marks, uh, when they are lined up, allows the engine to, to start. And I'll leave it here so you can see the, the, uh, uh, the point of entropy here. In other words, the highest point in the system. Again, go back and review Marie 4. Um, if you didn't see it or if you did see it, always worth the second look. Once this is lined up, um, and we have to wait for it because magnetic propulsion takes a little bit of time. If I remove my finger from this, the flywheel is going to initiate. It's going to start to spin on its own and not to put any energy into it. And then that attenuator is going to provide acceleration at a certain point. No energy involved in the system whatsoever. So if I let my finger off of this, and I'll be careful to let it off, you're going to see now the flywheel starting to turn. It's going to come around to the point of entropy. And there we have that acceleration. And then I'm going to play the computer. And, uh, every photon engine needs control voltage for the computer. So every time the computer makes an adjustment there, and I'm going to rotate that around so it ma the timing marks match, we're going to get an acceleration. I'll do that a couple more times. Just so you can see the engine starting up and initiating. And again, every time I make that adjustment, I get an acceleration. Now again, there's nothing on this um, uh, attenuator. In other words, I can freely spin it. Um, and I'm not going to stick my fingers too far in there, but if I align it, each time I align it, if I'm the computer, I'm going to get a little bit of an acceleration. I'll do it a couple more times. 
Okay, and I'm going to let it go now so you can understand um, how the attenuator is going around. We'll have it follow um, the, uh, the power ring. And again, each time we do that, each time we speed it up, we're storing energy in this flywheel system. Again, flywheels do not generate energy. They don't generate electricity. Well, we would have to have an alternator or generator on the top of this um, device, and then it definitely would put out um, electrical energy consistent with the amount of energy that we stored in the flywheel system. What the magnetic uh, field does, and again, it doesn't provide energy, it provides a force, is it is aligning so that it can give us that acceleration as we go. I'll do it a couple more times. And again, I'm playing the computer. I'm realigning this. And I'll show you that it aligns almost by, by itself. When we uh, get to the point where we're speeding up uh, the, the, the mass uh, to a high rate of speed, I'll just rotate it here. It's probably 40 RPM. You can see that the timing mark comes around, and I need very little adjustment to maintain my acceleration or to maintain the current speed. Uh, so if I have an alternator up there, it's going to start uh, giving me drag. Um, I can accelerate that, and I can decouple and couple the load. Okay, And I'll let that rotate around. So again, we're storing energy, and then we're taking energy out of the system. But as you can see, the acceleration and the initiation is caused by the paired permanent magnetic field. And again, by, through attenuation, we weaken the field, unlike gasoline motor, diesel motor, uh, electrical uh, uh, motor, where we have to increase fuel, uh, air mixture, or we have to increase voltage and amperage to get the device to accelerate. Um, this is providing that acceleration um, uh, by itself. I'll slow this way down, just so you can see it one more time. And I mean, I'll, I'll try to get it as slow as I can get it here. Let's see here. And we'll wait for it, just so that you can see that acceleration again. stopping it. I did a little bit too soon again. Okay, here we go. There's the point of entropy, and again, there's that acceleration that we are looking for, and I'll rotate that around. Again, there's nothing on this, no, no, no inherent large force that I have to deal with. I'll let it go one more time. And visualizing it at this speed, to me, uh, presents a better teaching. And there we go. There's that acceleration we're looking for. And if we continue to align those marks, if I'm the computer, very, very small amount of energy involved, we can speed this engine up and then harvest the energy um, that's uh, apparent in the system after we get it to the operating speed that we wish. Um, in closing, once again, Every device that we show in this series is available on a tour, and you on a tour can actually operate these devices that we're showing. Um, we have them set up so they're, they're safe to operate. Um, we're right there with you. Um, you can bring a meter in and see what kind of uh, energy they're producing. And everything is, as you can see, pretty transparent. Um, there isn't any real place that we could hide a battery or switching system. And all of these engines rotate in both directions so that uh, you can understand that we're presenting them honestly. So we thank you. We hope you enjoyed this episode. Look forward to seeing you in the next episode in this series.